This slide tells you a little bit, little bit about string functions in SQL. So most of the string functions that are available to you in the data step in SAS can also be used in PROC SQL. Now, not all of these are standard SQL, so if you're working on a different implementation, not all of these will work, but uh, many, many of them will, and there's additional functions that, um, that are not part of uh, the data step. So, for example, uh, you can use substring and length just as you could in the data step. In addition to this, there's, um, there's a function that's, that's very nice called contains. So contains is an alternative to the index function. So on, on, that, um, pre on a previous assignment, I wanted you to look at all of the winter contest postings and identify, for example, uh, was there a trip involved? So the winter contest said, tell us what you're going to redeem your miles for in winter. And some people said things like, I want, um, I want a toaster or I want a table saw, while others said, I want to go to Disneyland or I want to have a trip. And on your previous assignment, you used the index function in the data step to try to um, code uh, you know, postings as, as, one of the, as stuff or, or trips. So how, how would we do this in SQL? So in particular, I've given you some code that's going to make a data set called trips and TRIPS is going to extract all of the records that involve uh, a posting about a trip. So let's make a new table called TRIPS and I'm just going to select the content for now. Um, I, in, in, if I were really doing this I'd probably want to keep a, uh, a content ID or, or a member ID along with the content, but for now let's just keep the content. And I'm going to pull this from airmiles.posts. That's the data set that you used in your homework. Now let's look at the where statement. So first off, there was a variable called name. This indicated what contest that posting went with. So recall that if the string was exactly this, you, you had to type this in for your homework. What are you redeeming for the? Uh, that, that indicates that it is the winter contest. And let's um, also place a, an age restriction on this. So where C date is between these two dates, 20 December, 7 December and 20 December 2010, and those were the dates that you used. Now, let's extract only um, entries that involve something about a trip. Now, for the sake of, of uh, keeping this slide short, I just gave you a couple names, but you could expand this with additional entries if you want. So let's see how I'm going to do this. So it, first off, it has to have the right name, then it has to have the right date, so and, and, and I'm going to stick a bunch of stuff in parentheses. So if anything in the parentheses is true, then we're going to pick it as long as the date and the name are also correct. So lower is another string function that uh, converts content to lowercase, so if we did have capital T, lowercase RIP for trip, then this would make it all lowercase. So the contains operator, the contains, um, I guess it's a keyword, uh, says, okay, if, if this, this lowercase version of content contains the string TRIP, or if it contains vacation, or if it contains France, or if it contains cruise, any, you know, any of these things, then that's an indication that it's a cruise, and therefore it's going to get retained into this trip database. So contains is very useful. Another function that um, is very useful is called like. I guess it's not quite a function, it's, it's an operator. Um, what like does is it searches for a pattern. Now, um, pattern searching in general is a very important topic, and maybe we'll talk a little bit more about this in a couple weeks. Um, in Unix and VI and Perl, Python, there are things called regular expressions. Regular expressions, you can use these in grep, in sed, in, in VI, in Python or Perl, uh, and they do special string matching patterns. SASSQL and the like function also do uh, pattern matching, but they don't use the standard regular expression um, 
uh, symbols that, that are used, but just be aware that these are kind of analogous to what you get in a regular expression. There's just different symbols. So um, underscore says, um, I, I want to match any single character. Percent signs match any sequence of zero or more characters. So I'll give you a little example. Let's say I have a data set or table called names, and names has these six names in it. So if I say select star from names where name is like capital D underscore Y A N, so under capital D underscore A N, that underscore means match any single character. So anything that could be any character you want. The only name in this list that has capital D and then something, A-N, is Dian. So that's the only name that gets pulled. As opposed to this one. So if I said where, let's pick everything from names where name is like D underscore, so it can be any letter you want. Uh, if you look at this, sometimes we have an I, sometimes we have a Y, so all those are going to get pulled in. AN percent. So that percent uh, is, is a wild card. So it can mean zero or one characters that match the ending of this. Um, it's like the star operator in Unix when you say ls star dot uh, lst. That star is just a wild card saying zero or one characters. Well, percent sign is just like the star in Unix. So notice this thing pulls everything because uh, well, let's see, Diana matches, so A would be what the percent sign matches in that first record, E is what it matches in the second, NA is what it matches in the third. In this last record, it doesn't, you know, there are no characters, so it's zero or more characters, so Diane also gets pulled in. As opposed to if you say D underscore AN underscore, it pulls these three. If you put two underscores, that means it has to have two characters at the end at least, and so all these things get matched as well. All right, so sometimes this is very useful to you. Okay, a few more things that you might want to do to your uh, reports generated with SQL. Maybe we want to stick a label on and maybe even some formats. So how do you do that? Well, um, in SQL, you stick a label equal statement after the variable and you separate it by a space. So for example, if I said select color, space label is favorite color, what you'll see is that now instead of seeing color, you're gonna see favorite color with the C capitalized exactly the way I put it in the quote up here. Then we separate variables by commas. So comma X, and then I'll give it a label, and let's stick a format of 4.1. So I don't need the label statement. I could get rid of this if I didn't want number of kids to pop in there, and I could just stick the format then uh, after x, after the space from, from x. Okay, then we put a comma in, y, and here's the amount, and you can see how I specify these SAS formats. So we're going to select these variables with these labels and formats from my data, and here's the result. So that's how you can make your report look a little bit nicer.